Today we continue our sermon series, Absolute Power, with this sermon, The Power of Your Mind. Absolute power can transform every one of your problems into an opportunity for success. Absolute power will birth a new dawn of hope in your life, help you realize the goals and dreams with a birth of confidence, personal potential, and communication. Absolute power will make the impossible possible. Absolute power will take sorrow and transform it to joy. Defeat will become victory. Stress will become peace. Doubt will become faith. And fear becomes hope. God has given you absolute power for your life. It's in the word of God. You are a child of God in the kingdom of God, which rules the earth. Therefore, you have the right to have access to that power. Read with me, Romans 12, 2. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Father God, thank you for the joy of being in the house of the Lord today. Help us to discover the power that we have, that our lives shall be filled with the joy and the blessings of God. In the authority of your name we pray and ask it, and all of God's children said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. When you read the Word of God, you have to consider the power of your mind. Our thoughts are the decorations inside the sanctuary where we all live. What does that? Our thoughts. The human mind, what a wonderful thing it happens to be. I am told by authorities that you have the mental capacity to remember everything that's in in a set of encyclopedias that you have the capacity to learn at least six languages fluently. Now, obviously, I'm not fulfilling the full capacity of my mind because I can't do that. The Bible says, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. Why? Because he trusts in you. Isaiah 26 and 3. The Bible says, be not conformed to this world, but you be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the acceptable and perfect will of God. Ephesians 4, 23, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind that you put on the new man, which was according to the word in true righteousness and holiness. True righteousness is something America must rediscover. The Bible says, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, Philippians 2.5. The message in the entirety of the Word of God is clear. If you want to change your life for the better, you have to control your thoughts. Change your thoughts and you can change your life. The Bible says it this way, as a man slash woman thinketh, so is she or he. Say that with me. As a man thinketh, so is he. The power of your mind can transform impossible to possible. This book says nothing is impossible to you. And if you really believe that, that will transform your life. That's a fact. The power of your mind can transform I can't to I will. Sorrow into joy. Defeat into victory, stress into peace, doubt into faith. David said, thy word have I hidden in my heart. What did he mean by that? Hidden in his heart means he memorized it. Do you read the Bible enough to have any of it memorized? Because when you get in a spiritual battle, you don't have time to listen to a tape series. You need help right then from the word of God. David said, thy word have I memorized in my heart that I might not sin against God. That means to miss the mark of God. God's word says nothing is impossible to those that believe. Say that with me. Nothing is impossible to those that believe. And when you start believing that simple verse, your life will never be the same. Give the Lord praise in the house.
Change your thoughts and you'll change your world. If you think you can, you will. If you think you're beaten, you are. If you think you will fail, you will fail. It's not what you're going through. It's what you're going to that makes the difference. This Bible says in so many words, if you're in a storm, keep rowing. Just keep rowing. You're going to reach the shore. Don't worry about the winds. Don't see the waves. Just keep rowing the boat. God's in the boat with you, and you're going to make it to the other side. If you're in a fight, fight to win. There's no such thing as a half-hearted fight. Fight to win. If you've been knocked down, get up. You're not defeated until you stay down. Proverbs 24, 6, 16 says, the righteous fall seven times and rise yet again. If you've been knocked down, get up, wipe the blood off your face and get back in the hunt. You will prevail. St. Paul said like this, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, these are eight things, Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are noble, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, full of virtue, praiseworthy, think on these things. You think on those eight things and your life will instantly begin to feel the presence of God and the peace that God brings. Your thoughts become words. Your words become actions. Your actions determine the quality of your life, the quality of your marriage, the quality of your business, the quality of America, and eventually your eternal soul. What comes out of your mouth is the mirror of your heart. Your mind and thoughts you think are reflected and what we call your attitude. You are responsible for what you think about, what you brood about, what you worry about. How many of you looking at me right now, and some of you by television, there are certain topics in your life that when it goes into your brain, suddenly you start to brood about it. And at about five minutes, you have steam coming out your ears. You're accomplishing absolutely nothing. I mean, you feel like you could bite a nail in half. Your attitude is contagious. Fear is contagious. Courage is contagious. You start sharing that in your family or in your prayer group, and suddenly it becomes a different family. St. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 3, the three greatest words in the human language are faith, hope, and love, and they are all contagious. Once you adopt them, it instantly begins to flood your family with that. It's your choice which thoughts you allow to enter into your mind and determine your decisions and your quality of life. What is an attitude? It's the advancement of who you really are. Your roots are hidden, but the fruit will always come right out of here. It's your best friend or it's your worst enemy. It draws people to you or people are repelled from you because of your sour and bitter attitude. It's never content until it's expressed. It determines your success or your failure. Your thought life does not depend on the circumstance. We have a rock rib confidence based on the word of God that endures no matter what the circumstance happens to be. Listen to these three words. Ability is what you're capable of doing. Motivation determines what you do. And attitude determines how well you do it. Again, the Bible says, as a man or a woman thinketh, so is that person. You are what you are, and you are where you are because of a thought life that you have embraced in your life. Your attitude determines your attainments. Compare the lives of St. Paul and Doubting Thomas. St. Paul writes in the Bible that he was beaten and left for dead in the streets of Jerusalem. He was stoned. He was shipwrecked a night and a day in the, in the deep. He was bitten by a deadly viper. 
He shook it off. And people began to worship him because the viper was so deadly. They couldn't see why he wasn't even getting sick. He was thrown into prison in chains and sang in the midnight hour. And then Paul puts pen to parchment and says, these light afflictions, say that with me, these light afflictions, I guarantee you any 21st century Christian who was beaten, stoned, and thrown in prison for their testimony would be writing a book about wine and shine. Paul said, these light afflictions are not worthy to be compared with the joy of the reward that God has prepared for those that love him. We're more than conquerors through Christ. Nothing is impossible to those that believe. The victory is ours through Christ the Lord. The Bible says, rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. The victory is yours over all things, over every situation. Nothing can defeat you because nothing is impossible. Give the Lord praise in the house. From the Apostle Paul to Doubting Thomas. After the resurrection of Jesus, Thomas said, I can't believe that he is risen from the dead until I touch his body. Now, when you've had Jesus for a pastor for three and a half years, that just is no better. But here is this whiny, thumb-sucking believer (laughs) saying, unless I can catch him, I'm just not going to believe. Well, hooray for you. Stop saying, I can't, and start saying, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. With the new year upon us, it's time to unlock the power of biblical fasting and transform your life. Do not be content going through this new year carrying the same burdens from your past. God has much more in store for your life and the lives of your loved ones. For your generous gift of any amount, we will send you the Unlocking the Power of Fasting devotional by Pastor Matt and a vial of anointing oil. For your gift of $150 or more in support of the ministry, you'll also receive the Unlocking the Power of Fasting journal, the Facts of Fasting sermon, and a Daily Truth perpetual calendar. You can experience a deeper, more powerful relationship with God that can only come through prayer and fasting. Send your best gift today. Call the number on your screen or visit jhm.org slash fasting. This book said you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. That power is absolute power. It's power over the world, the flesh, and the devil. It's power over powers and principalities in the heavenlies. It's power over sickness, power over disease, power over poverty. It is the Lord that gives you the ability to prosper, power over fear and insecurity. Lo, I am with you always, even to the ends of the earth. Our God is an awesome God. He is an all-powerful God. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Give the Lord praise in the house. It will be impossible to estimate the numbers of jobs lost, promotions missed, sales not made, marriages ruined, churches destroyed by whiny, thumb-sucking, pity-pot, Bible-thumping babies who have no grit and no fortitude to fight the fight. Let me tell you something, church. We are in a fight for the soul of this nation. We are going to fight the good fight. We're going to sing onward Christian soldiers marching as to war. We're taking no prisoners. In God we trust and in this book we stand. Give the Lord praise in the house. One of my favorite quotations of all time is given by President Calvin Coolidge. He says, press on. Nothing in the world can take the place of persistence. Talent will not. Nothing in the world is more common than unsuccessful men with talent. He continues by saying, genius will not. The world is full of educated derelicts. And having attended three universities, I can tell you that's the truth. 
Persistence and determination alone are omnipotent, end of quote. Life is like a wheelbarrow. You get nowhere till you start pushing. Sitting down and whining about it is never going to get you anything because nobody cares. You need to understand that you and God can accomplish anything if you can get it here and here and it matches here, you're on your way to victory. Absolute victory. Absolute power in an absolute God. Give the Lord a shout of praise in the house. The attitude of fortitude turns adversity into advantage. If what you're doing doesn't have resistance, then what you're doing is not worth doing. Every project I've ever tried to do in the kingdom of God, there was a self-anointed resistance committee saying, you can't do that. We don't have the money to do that. We'll never get that done, but we did. Why? Because it was God's will based on God's word for God's glory. God funded it and we put it together. Thank God for what's here. It is to the glory of God who says nothing is impossible to those who believe and will try to do it. Resistance. Look at resistance as a friend. Resistance of water. Without resistance of water, a ship cannot float. Without the resistance of air, a jet plane can't fly. Without the resistance of gravity, you can't get up and walk out of this room. Have you run into a stone wall? Then go over it. Go around it. Go under it. Fight the good fight. Quitting is not an option. Quitting is not an option. You will prevail. Nothing is impossible. Adversity is opportunity to those who possess the attitude of divine fortitude. A rubber band is effective only when it's stretched. A turtle gets nowhere until it sticks its neck out. Remember the tea kettle. Though it's up to its neck in hot water, it sings its best song. Kites rise against the wind, not with the wind. I love this statement by Winston Churchill. The nose of a bulldog is shaped back so he can bite and breathe without turning loose. I love that. <laughs> what do you see when you look at a, at a mighty oak tree? It began out as a tiny seed in the soil that had to struggle and push its way up through the rock to the sunshine. It fights its way up to air only to wrestle with storms. Then comes frost, then comes snow before it can become a mighty oak. It doesn't happen overnight. It accomplished over the adversity because adversity leads to achievement. Adversity leads to achievement. God uses no one who does not graduate from his university of adversity. Look at the Bible. Joseph came to the throne of Egypt through the pit his brothers threw him in. He came through the slanderous charge a Potiphar's desperate housewife who accused him of rape. Joseph went to an Egyptian prison for 12 years because of what that woman said. He became the prime minister of Egypt, the most powerful man in the world in 24 hours. Think about this. From the jailhouse to the penthouse in 24 hours, the favor of God in one day can erase the failure of 12 years. If that 12 needs to be 40, 40 years, God can take you where he wants you to go and no one can stop you. Adversity in Joseph's life was the furnace that transformed this fuzzy-faced teenager with a wild sport coat into a statesman of steel who, by the way, saved the world from starvation his words of declaration crushed the chains of slavery for the Jewish people. 
His words liberated the Jewish people to leave slavery in Egypt for the milk and honey of the promised land. Because words and thoughts go together to make a mission that's possible. Why? He had grit. He had fortitude. He rode the winds of adversity to the highest pinnacle of success. When he opened his mouth, when he got in front of Pharaoh, he didn't say, oh, terrible times are coming. He said, we're going to have seven years of abundance and we're going to save. And when he saved enough food to feed the world, the hunger times came, but they had plenty because there was a man in the camp who had God's mind and God's will. And the world was saved by this teenager who went through a university of adversity. Moses tended sheep for 40 years on the backside of the desert. He was listed in Egypt as public enemy number one before God sent him thundering into Pharaoh's court shouting, let my people go. The point is God uses no one until he puts you in a blast furnace to check out your fortitude factor. And if you say this is all I can take, then that's where God will let you level off for the rest of your life. But as long as you stay the course and keep pursuing the purposes and will of God, he will take you from glory to glory to glory. The fights will get bigger. The enemies will be tougher but God will show you a strength you didn't dream ever existed and you will be victorious in the end, I promise you. <laughs> Abraham Lincoln became America's greatest president after being defeated 12 times for public office. He ran the 13th time against impossible odds and won. He pushed and he prodded the Congress of the United States to pass the 13th Amendment, forever ending slavery in the United States of America. God bless the sacred memory of Abraham Lincoln. A small businessman's clothing store was threatened with extinction by a national chain that bought all the property in the block surrounding that little store. The big store came to the guy, the little guy with the little store in the middle and said, sell out or we will break you. He said, I'm not selling. The mega corporation, true to its threat, built a massive store surrounding that small little store. That store stretched all the way to the end of the block. It consumed the block. And when they got through, they had a huge advertising campaign. And they put up a banner stretching the whole width of the store that said, Grand Opening. And the little guy with the little store right in the middle put across his business, Main Entrance. <laughs> That's what God's looking for. Little is much when God is in it. If you have a little faith and you can practice this, there's nothing that God assigns for you to do that you can't do. If 10 people in a row come to you saying, you'll never get that done, it's proof positive God is in it. Never ever doubt the faith and the mission that God gives you. Now, there are some of you in this room and some of you watching by television that have fear of the future, self-doubt. Some of you lack self-confidence to try. Some of you in your life have an absence of peace because of the problems you're going through. Some of you have fear that's strangling your hope for tomorrow. I assure you that when you commit that to the Lord, you will be victorious in every dimension of your life. How many of you in this room can say, Pastor, I recognize I need to change my thought life now to accomplish God's mission in my life. Let me see your hand. Would you please stand? I want to have a prayer with you. 
Those of you that are watching by television, join us. Extend your hand toward the television screen and pray this prayer. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father I, surrender my life to you. I surrender my life to you. I surrender my thoughts to you. I surrender my thoughts to you. And from this day forward, and from this day forward I rebuke every thought, I rebuke every thought that, destroys that destroys or impedes, or impedes God's, assignment God's assignment from being fulfilled, from being fulfilled in my life. Right now, right now, I receive confidence. I receive, confidence. I receive peace for the future. I receive, peace for the future. I receive hope for tomorrow. I receive hope for tomorrow. Because God is with me. Because God is and, with nothing me. and nothing shall be impossible, shall be impossible unto, me. unto me. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord praise in the house of God. I want to invite you to join us for live worship services each Sunday at 8.30 and 11 a.m. Central Standard Time, also at 6.30. Join us for worship and a gospel message from Cornerstone Church each week. You can watch by going online to jhm.org slash watch. Now stay tuned. Pastor Hagee is bringing a blessing. On Saturday, October 7th, while Israeli citizens celebrated the end of Sukkot, over 1,500 Iran-backed Hamas terrorists wage a coordinated and vicious attack against the nation of Israel. This is our time to show love and generosity for a nation suffering one of its darkest hours. October 7th was the deadliest day in Jewish history since the Holocaust. But make no mistake, Israel is shaken, but it is not defeated. Proceeds raised will address the humanitarian crisis resulting from this massacre. First responders and medical facilities are overwhelmed and we need your help. Go to jhm.org slash standwithisrael to donate today and show your solidarity for the state of Israel and the Jewish people. Let it be known that Israel, you are not alone. You've been watching Hagee Ministries. And now, your blessing with Pastor John Hagee. And now may the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you, giving you his peace. May you live with great joy, knowing that you are God's child, living in a dimension where grace has been given and the abundance of heaven has been received. May you see the blessings of God is bringing through the answered prayer in this new year. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then watch as the windows of heaven pour out untold blessings as you pursue the purposes of God for your life. Our God is a good God, and he wants you to be blessed in every area of your life. In the authority of Jesus' name, receive this blessing. Amen and amen.